Well, before I did Back to the Future, I did a movie called The Wildlife, uh, and Eric Stoltz was in that. Eric Stoltz was my boyfriend, and um, Chris Penn, God rest his soul, was in it as well. Um, and Art Linson directed it, and um, Cameron Crowe wrote the screenplay. Time out just for one second. Mm -hmm. Eric was your boyfriend or played your boyfriend? Help. Eric played my boyfriend. He was definitely not my boyfriend. And um, I was, uh, I did that movie, and it was at Universal. And so when they started casting for uh, Back to the Future, they were looking on the chem, then they didn't have uh, any kind of, you know, computer editing. They did it on real things, and it was called a chem. And they were looking at the chem and to look at Eric Stoltz for the lead in Back to the Future. And uh, Zemecka said, who's that girl? Who's that girl? She's great. And so they brought me in. And um, I, I remember the screen test. Uh, Spielberg was running the, the video camera, and we were in Amblin. And um, for some reason, the part was just perfect for me, the old and the young. And um, they cast me and Eric Stoltz, strangely enough, uh, as Marty McFly and Lorraine McFly. And um, then, um, then they, you know, fired. Eric and got Michael Fox. Right. What was going on six during those first six weeks? I mean, was it? Um, I, th I think I had done this other movie with Eric Stoltz, and so he just was really, uh, he had a really interesting process. It kind of, he liked to create uh, friction, I think. Um, he liked to be called by his character name all the time. He wouldn't answer. If you said, Eric, he wouldn't answer you. You had to call him by his character name, which a lot of people find hard, you know, to do. And, and he wanted to grow his fingernails really long because guitar players have long fingernails and they were dirty and things like that that just weren't going over in a big, giant summer teen movie. You know, they wanted him to be a, you know, a teen idol. And um, they also you know, dyed his hair and tried to cover up his, he's got red hair and they tried to cover up his freckles. And uh, he just, after the first read through of Back to the Future, everybody's sitting around going, ha ha ha, isn't that great? You know, because it really was a great script. And they said, Eric, what do you think? And Eric said, I think it's a tragedy, really. Silence. <laughs> Tumbleweeds. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, why do you think it's a tragedy? And he said, and rightly so. He said, my entire family remembers a past, and I, Marty, remember a completely different past. It was a very sad thought to think that you would remember something, all kinds of memories that no one else remembered. He was right, but it wasn't the time <laughs> to bring that up. He should have done that over cocktails with just me and a few close friends. Um, so things just kind of went awry, uh -huh. you know. So and how did you guys find out? How did they let you guys know that he was no longer going to be, that they changed history yet again? <laughs> Six weeks into the show. Um, he, oh, it was a, this is a good story for me. I mean, I would, anyway, at the time, and since the time I was doing Jaws 3D, I was dating and was engaged to Dennis Quaid. And so he was making a movie called Enemy Mine in Germany, and I was making Back to the Future. And um, he, we hadn't seen each other in a long time, so I had a week off, but they wouldn't let me leave at, at Back to the Future. So I just snuck on a plane to go to Munich to meet my boyfriend. And uh, I call in, and at that time, you know, no one had cell phones. And I called into my, my voice machine, and it was like, beep, hello, it's Steven. You gotta call me, Leah. Beep. It's Bob Zemeckis. Leah, call me. Beep. <laughs> it's Bob Gale. <laughs> it's like everybody called me, and I was like shaking in Munich, like, oh, what happened? They busted me. And so I called, and they said they had fired him, and which was very upsetting to me because he was really one of my really good friends, and I think he's a wonderful actor. So it was very upsetting, but I jumped on the next plane, and um, we had to reshoot six weeks. What, what sort of scenes had to be reshot? Um, the main scene, there were two scenes that I had to reshoot that I remember specifically. One was this, the dinner scene when he comes to my house after he um, saves, who does he say? He saves, he saves him. Yeah, I save him. Um, and and that scene and then the scene, the that real famous scene where I go, Calvin Klein, the, the, isn't that your name? It's on your underwear. <laughs> 
<laughs> Originally, the underwear was supposed to be on my hope chest, not just as pants, but they changed their mind at the last minute, thankfully. But <laughs> those two scenes I had to shoot over, and um, there was a lot. There was a lot of um, stunts right. and things that Chris, they... Chris Lloyd said they had to reshoot the whole sort of terrorist scene. Yeah. So that's just, God, all yeah. that money, all that time. They had gone from like two weeks of nights to another two weeks of nights. Yeah. He said, he was, he, he said, he said that for him it actually turned out okay because he found his... Found the character during that period. Mm. He said, "I did a little bit better. I lightened <laughs> up the tone a little bit." And he said also by working with Michael, that his whole tone sort of changed. Right. Well. Did you find that? Did you find that you had a lighter? Did you change your interpretation with Michael? No. <laughs> okay. I and I, I didn't. Um, I think in seeing that movie, I think just recently, I don't hardly ever watch my own movies, but uh, I had just seen that movie oddly about a year ago on the big screen and when I saw it I was really struck by Crispin Glover and my work that there was a lot of depth to it that it really wasn't like we really acted we I I was impressed you know you forget this stuff and you get you know you get you used to your own stuff and you're like Ugh. but we did a lot of really deep work. I mean, the whole love, the whole disappointment thing when we're old, the whole um, when I fall in love with him, when he finally hits Biff and I fall in love with him. I mean, it's not fake work. It's not surface work. And uh, we really, I, I, I was really proud of us. I thought we went for, and I think it made the movie a lot of, it grounded the movie and and Michael was a great compliment for that because he was so you know up and energetic and funny and falling over and all that but I think that we were a good balance because you got to have heart for a movie to become classic like that movie you have to feel something I and I had forgotten that you did feel something when you see that movie. it's one of the best movies I think at the time I thought it was one of the best movies I'd ever seen yeah, it was really beautifully constructed. But there is, you forget those moments, like when when Lorraine puts the cake down and she's like, and, and she's laughing, and he's, and, and Crispin's laughing. <laughs> and you see this look on her face, like Lorraine is just like, grabs her vodka. You know, you just get this feeling like this woman is dead. Her life is over. She's so unhappy. And that gives you something that you, when you see her young and you go, oh my God, she was once happy, she was once beautiful, she was once vivacious, and her life has been, you know, the destroyed, yeah. How does it feel to look at it, you know, 20 and some odd years later, and, you know, now having the depth of being an adult, knowing, you know, having your own life experiences now, how does it feel to see it on that level? I don't know, it's, it's always weird to see yourself a long time ago, it's like, who was I? You know, it's weird. But it's also weird because I'm almost the age that Lorraine, and everyone was like, she's so, when I'd be in makeup, they're like, oh, you're so old. <laughs> and now I'm almost that age. And it's, I'm only like three years away. Yeah, okay, you don't look anything like Lorraine looked. I look a little bit. They, they did a little pretty good. They did a little right here and a little right here, the makeup. But, you know, that makeup's always looks bad. It's hard to do age makeup. How was it to play the different ages and, and the different versions of Lorraine? Because Lorraine went through mm -hmm. a couple of changes in a couple of different movies. Yeah, it was cool. It was a great part. I, I always think I'm so happy that I'm known for that part, mostly. Because it was versatile. All the characters were interesting. I'd forgotten, even in Back to the Future 2, all the work I did with being 85 and being the alternate Lorraine with the big boobs and the young Lorraine again. I was like crazy. Was it strange to duplicate? Chris said that that there was it was strange to duplicate to to, to refine that character after five years. Was it five years? Yeah, um, must have been for him. But mu because I got to play so many different people, right. and none of them were um, similar. What was hard for me was that Crispin wasn't there, and they had this imposter dude as Crispin, which was really upsetting to me. Because I thought Crispin was a genius, and he, he clearly was. In the first movie, he was a genius. Oh, yeah. Just a, a flawless you performance. Want to do it again? Well, that's another historical story. They, 
they didn't, they couldn't get along with him. He was also very method, you know, he just did a lot of, it's hard to be an actor, you know, it's hard, some people can't just, shy, you know, be real political and funny and then be real sad, you know. I mean, I can kind of do that pretty well, because I'm a mother, I multitask, but some actors get stuck kind of in what they're doing. And a lot of directors understand that, and a lot of them don't. And um, and Crispin was kind of difficult, and he had trouble hitting his marks, which is why in Back to the Future 2, they have him upside down. They had designed that whole thing where he was upside down just because they were so mad at him from not hitting his marks. They were like, ha, 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 we'll make him hit his marks. <laughs> <laughs> and they, so they, they hung him, they hung the, um, the other guy but it was originally designed for Crispin. Interesting. Yeah, it was really interesting, but... Plus it made it harder to see that it wasn't Crispin to the audience. You know, if you guys upside down, you're sort of, you know, in an age makeup, it's kind of tougher to figure that out. Crispin was a genius. He was, yeah, he was. incomparable. When we watched, when we all got together to watch, I remember this really specifically, because I was a little bitter about him not doing it, because I knew that, even selfishly, they couldn't use me as much. Um, but also that I, I just thought he was great. Um, uh, what was I saying? I went off on something. Seeing it later. With oh, when we came back after five years, like you told me, uh, to, to watch the movie at Amblin with everybody to kind of get in that back to the future mood before we did the next one. I remember specifically everyone was, all the brass was sitting behind me and Steven and Bob and all the producers and Michael and everybody. Tom Wilson, and um, they laughed hardest and most at everything that Crispin did. Everything, when he, when he, when he holds up the bra, uh, you know, and he's like, oh, do you want me to make a pass? You know, everything he did, they were just like, ah! I was like, can't you hear yourselves? He's the, he's, he's just brilliant. Anyway, I'm so still weird. sad about it because he's just such a great actor. And then the, the third movie, played yet another not even Lorraine just some other ancestor yeah well the third movie I didn't get to do too much um, and yeah but I did it was fun playing with Michael those moments that in an Irish the Irish thing was really fun to do Zemeckis with the special effects strange with the double and triple he's a genius. I mean, I, he, I remember specifically I think it was Back in the Future 2 when Michael was his daughter and his son and himself and then he was three people in this one dining room scene and they were just like all all the geniuses were all sitting around and now they can do it but this was cutting-edge technology at the time it hadn't really been done and um, they had this computerized uh, camera on a robot camera that could do the same move twice you know and they'd have to put Michael in the next day because they'd have so much makeup and blah 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 and all the geniuses are sitting around from ILM or whatever trying to figure out how to do it and I, I remember Zemeckis would sit there and let them talk for an hour to about the third hour he'd go okay guys this is how you do it <laughs> he'd be like really tolerant but then he'd tell him how to do it because he was so smart he just always knew what was going on he was just he's just uh, incomparable, his taste for detail and for um, uh, all, everything. He was always thinking about what was behind, you know, like what should the cat run across from right to left or, you know, he would always be thinking of something else, which was a little detail extraordinary. Detail yeah. Movie that just sort of like if you watch the movie once, you enjoy the movie. If you watch it again more than one time, the little details of yeah. What he puts in all the little scenes. And as a filmmaker, he's such a great storyteller that he uh, lets the audience know very early that they should be watching. You know, what always amazed me was that this one joke in the very beginning of Back to the Future when I say, you know, your Uncle Jailbird Joey didn't make parole. It's almost 40 minutes later that he pays off the joke when Michael Fox goes, get used to those bars, kid. And the audience never failed to get that joke. And that, after doing a sitcom, if you could, you know, get an audience to remember a setup for 40 minutes, you're a, ge you know, a genius storyteller. Even Twin Pine Mall and Lone Pine. Mall, yeah. Though, it's just like it doesn't pay it off till the very end of the movie. Right. And if you blink, you miss it. Right. I mean, it's just brilliant. Yeah. You know, you think somebody's gonna see a movie once. You're not, you're not putting stuff in there 
for the people who are going to watch it again. Right. And he did. Right. That was a new concept, I think, in a lot of ways. You know, the whole idea that people are going to, you want to get people to come back and see a movie. That wasn't so, in 1985, it was a new concept. And the, the, how did it, I mean, that movie exploded. Yeah. Nobody expected the kind of reaction it got. No, except for, I guess, Universal, because it only took them three weeks or something from the time they wrapped to the time they got in the movie theaters. Really? They had, yeah, they had, like, six main editors in these editing bays just... Because <laughs> they were like, this movie's coming out fast. I guess they previewed it or something in a rough form, and it was like, <laughs> we've got gold. So they got it out. Wow. It was kind of awesome. How was that for you? How did things change for you? Um... I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when when you came back for that movie, was it strange? Was it fun? Was it for the sequel? For the for the. It was fun. It was a big payday. Woohoo! No, it was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was really fun, and it was. Uh, I had done a lot of movies in between there, but it was also a year, and so it was a kind of a hard year for me. The Back to Future two and three were done in a year. Yeah. We did them together. It was one script, and then they it kind of got too long, and only a, I don't know. I can't remember. I have a bad memory except for my lines and where my kids are, but uh, they just decided to split the movie and make it two movies. So then it became a year, and because I was wasn't much in Back to Future three, it was a lot of sitting around, which I don't like. I kept saying get me out and I'll give you back some of the money. I just can't sit around. But I, I did. I sat around for a long time. Did you, go to, um, did you ever go on the ride? Yes, I went on the Back to Future ride a bunch of times. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah, did you go to the opening of the rides? Or? I think I did. Did you go? You probably did. Yeah, I get on the Back to the Future ride. I get to get to the front of the line when I show up. I go, I'm Lorraine McFly. And I go, really? Who's that? <laughs> yeah, Christopher likes it. Went to the opening. One of the ride four times. Got sick. Good <gasps> ride. <laughs> oh, I love Christopher Lloyd. You I've got done... to do like one scene with him, right? Or... What was fascinating to me is that I've done three movies, four movies, five six movies six movies with Christopher Lloyd and I think I've been in two scenes with him three scenes in six movies which were the other three scenes what were the other three movies uh okay all three back to the futures I did a movie for uh sea world uh like a 3d movie for sea world I did a movie called the right to remain silent um, and then I did Dennis the Menace with him. 